Welcome back. Today our topic is DFF. So in this in this video we would cover how to find a DFF if you are given a if, if there is a table from for a given table, how do you create a custom table and register it to eBusiness apps? And how do you register a DFF for that particular table? And we are also going to look at the tables behind the descriptive flex fields. So the two key benefits that I see with descriptive flex fields is one, this allows descriptive flex fields allows users to store more information into the database without coding or customization or without even altering the structure of the underlying table. The, the, the other advantage would be that the, the context sensitiveness of the descriptive flex field. So for example, attribute one, I can use it to store FedEx tracking number for team A and the same field can be used to store inventory tracking inventory record tracker for team B this is by leveraging the context sensitiveness so let's start with finding the descriptive flex field details for a given table so in this particular example I'm going to look at the FND flex values so before we proceed, we need to make sure we have responsibility called application developer. So I'm in that application developer responsibility. I'm, uh, I'm at the navigation. I'm going to expand on the flex field. And I'm going to expand the descriptive. And I'm going to click on the register and open it. It's going to bring me the screen. I'm going to do the F11 or the search functionality. And I'm going to enter the table name that I'm, I'm interested in. Then I press Ctrl F11, which would give me the details for that particular table. So I can click on the columns, which would give me the columns, the descriptive columns that are tied to this. So there are a few things we need to look into. One is the, the structure column, the name, of course the table name, and the DFV, descriptive flex field value name. So these are the tab these are the key things that we need to look at. Of course, we also need to worry about the application and the table application. Let's keep this in mind as we proceed to the next part. So we're going to start with creating a custom table. So in this particular example, I'm going to create a custom table. Of course, the custom table should have the who columns, should have an attribute category, and should have attributes. So you can define you don't have to have the attributes in a, with the same name, but you can have any name. But it's it's preferred to have uh, the names in the attribute one through format. So why attribute category? If you look at the descriptive flex field, if you notice that there is a structure column, the structure column has value category, so that correspond that should correspond to the attribute category. In this particular table, they have defined it as value category. But in the table that I'm going to create, I'm, I'm specifying it as attribute category. You would, uh, this will be clear as we go through it. So I've created the table. I ran the script. So our next step is to register the table into the eBusiness. And, and we will then add it to the descriptive flex field. So before we proceed, let's first search the DFF to see whether the table exists. So I'm in the descriptive flex field. I'm searching for the table. I didn't see any records. So our next step will be to register the table into eBusiness. So there is a utility provided by Oracle. So we're going to use the AD underscore DD utility. So if you notice, it has three. Uh, this procedure takes three parameters. First is the application name. So I'm using a custom inventory application. And here is a table name. And the pad third parameter is uh, T which indicates it's a table. So once I register the table, I will register the columns that are tied to the table. So I've, what I've done is I've created a, 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 a SQL statement that will give me all the all the ta all the columns for a particular table, and in the format that I need. So I'm going to create. Uh, I have, so I have to create. So I have this AD register column utility. So basically, I'm going to get the information from the SQL the way in which I want it for the script to run. So I put the begin and end clause for it. And uh, if you notice that the register column will take the 
of course the application the table name the column name the sequence what type of column it is and whether it's a primary key or not so we, you click on one you execute the script I can go to the uh, application developer expand on application expand on the database click on table then I can search for the table name that I just registered so you will not be, so if you notice that the application that I tried that I registered it to the uh, custom inventory uh, application and I can see all the columns that are tied to it. So let's go ahead and create the uh, DFF for it. So I'm going to go back to Flex Fields. I'm going to click on Register. So I'm going to start with the uh, application. So the, uh, the application that I'm going to use, this is the custom inventory application. So this is the same. Remember, we have re you don't have to have the same uh, application that the table is registered to there's another column for it so I'm going to re so I'm going to specify the application to which the table is registered the next step would be to enter the title for the for that particular uh, descriptive flex field once you enter that I would enter the name so one thing to notice about the name is I have entered the name basically a I copied the title into the name but that's not the right way to do it because this name is very critical uh, when it comes to querying for the data so the, ideally it would be um, it would be a name without space so if, in this case I should have done is xx inv underscore whip underscore move I purposefully didn't do it uh, once you enter that information you enter the description then you enter the table name once you enter the table name you will be prompted to the structure column the structure column is the attribute category that we have defined in in this particular example so in this in this particular example i've entered the uh, attribute category so at this point we have filled pretty much all the information that's required for registering a dff I'm going to click and save so at this point the table is saved I'm going to click on columns so it's going to give you the columns that are tied to it so you can enable or disable the columns that you want to be uh, descriptive flex field so in this case I'm going to enable all the uh, attributes one so if you notice if you enter the column names as attribute 1 through X 1 through N those will be automatically enabled and you can you know you can name it anything that you want but uh, this is a better way to do it so at this point your your um, dff is registered let's go ahead and um, query the descriptive flex field so i'm going to go back to um, descriptive segments i'm going to search by the title and um, you know you can do as a regular uh, dff so, so so where do we use it will be a cut normally it will mostly in the custom tables um, so I would have another uh, video that's planned for creating forms and I can demo the uh, how to use these uh, descriptive flex fields in the custom tables or descriptive custom in the custom forms so the, the three main tables for the descriptive flex fields are FND descriptive flex fields VL these are actually the views of course uh, FND descriptive flex content VL and a flex field usage VL. So if you notice, all these three tables are tied with the descriptive flex field name. And whereas if you notice that flex field name is a name that is that we have given, even though I gave. So when I join these tables, I'd be using this name. So it's a good idea to give a meaning, you know, a, a more um, unique name for this particular field. Thank you.